Cass was a pretty unique individual. Um, he had a, uh, a lot of uh, energy. He, had, uh, he was the world's greatest salesman. He, everything he owned was for sale. He had a lot of friends. I don't remember any enemies. Once you knew Cash, you never forgot him. If you measured somebody's wealth by friendship, he was the, one of the wealthiest people who ever lived. He uh, liked, of course, cars. He was in the car business. And uh, his choice of cars were nice cars, so Porsches and Mercedes. And, and uh, he owned them all. If they went fast, that was great. And if they uh, went really fast, that was even better. Uh, when he was first diagnosed with cancer, we were in Rochester and had been told it's cancer and did the biopsy and we're over, uh, he's getting measured and marked for radiation and he's making jokes to the nurses. So he's there, they're talking about this and you know all of these things going on and he's cracking everybody up. That would be Cass. He dealt with everything with humor and you know, all right, tell it to me straight. Lise was a um, very intelligent, wonderful, incredible businessman. I took a business, grew it, and was very successful. Left two sons to, to carry on that business, and you know, so he really, he left quite a legacy. The thing about my father is, and what most people don't realize, is how many people he touched. You know, throughout his career, we had a hardware store, we had our company contracting business as well, but. Probably the most uh, impacting thing for me was the visitation and the people that came out of nowhere and the people that um, touched him in all kinds of different ways. And I'm talking about people from all walks of life. It didn't matter about their social or economic status in life. My dad touched a lot of them. Lise was a very vivacious, um, strong personality. He was in the, in the service. He went to Harvard, I mean, very educated, uh, intelligent man, and came back to Mankato. He played the saxophone. I think that that probably was really his passion. So we started the Hospice Family Fundraiser with the vision of just having something as simple as a goal of raising $10,000. To even imagine the dream of reaching a million dollars is unthinkable. And we did it. Um, but it's taken this community, it's taken Mayo, it's taken lots of volunteers. It's been how many people we've touched in the process that made it successful. To me, the beauty of hospice is that hospice works with you in whatever way uh, you need them to. It was really the hospice volunteers who, who, uh, who help families all the time. It's what they do. Cass was able to be at home towards uh, his final few months which was nice, you know, you could sit in a, in a setting in a room and, and watch TV and, and uh, watch games together and be with him and he could be with his family and, and uh, uh, that was a wonderful thing and it wouldn't have been possible without the hospice volunteers. Yeah, one of the, th one of the benefits it, it gave me was I'm not afraid to pass up, to die. Um, we had no idea what to expect for Cass, but he and I, it enabled he and I to talk about everything. Um, we talked about everything except our daughters. He, he just couldn't do that. Leaving them was the only thing he, he didn't want to talk about. It's been a real heartfelt journey. You know, I, I get emotional just thinking about it. And um, to see it keep going and the success we've gotten from it, it's, it's really satisfying. Um, so I'm really glad you're all gathered here tonight. I know you paid to get in and um, you, ha you know, you're enjoying the, the, the food. So I want to give you the restaurant guide to health care and the restaurant guide to serious illness and hospice and palliative care. Because if we think about health care, there are certain dollar signs we could attribute to things, just like if you're going to have a restaurant guide. And to diagnose a problem, that probably gets like three or four dollar signs. And treatments for problems, they probably get like, you know, seven to 10 or more dollar signs. But when we talk about the care that palliative care and hospice provides, the care that we know impacts persons' well being who are dealing with serious illness, we know that attention, not to the biology of the disease, right? Those, the biology of disease, they get a lot of dollar signs. 
but we focus on the lived experience. And I'll, frankly, if I had to give you the restaurant guide to our services, it's like a half dollar sign. So that's why it's so important you're here tonight, buying your tickets, supporting our cause, bidding on these auction items, because you know we're the half dollar sign specialty and we need your support. And your support, you know, you could say, well, what does it translate to? It translates to medicines for seriously ill people. It translates to people caring for them at their bedside. It translates to our social worker counseling the young children of a husband who is no longer able to work and undergoing extensive cancer treatments. So the money you spent tonight goes to support caring for other people. Um, I would say I would suggest that it's a good restaurant to dine at. You know, I think um, people can do can support hospice and palliative care in many ways. You can become a volunteer. Um, you can give money. You can give of your of your time uh, in in the fundraiser and in planning and in, in implementing that. So I think there are many many ways that we can. Um, support and continue to support hospice and palliative care. I, I think that the, the most important message that needs to be sent out to everybody um, who participates in this effort is, is how much it's appreciated and um, where it has gone and how many people it has touched and how many people will continue to touch. So when you ask me what I would say to the volunteers, um, it's, a, it's a thank you. For everybody who comes to the hospice fundraiser, um, they're there to give something back to these wonderful volunteers. Um, I think I would say to everyone out there, thank you. Um, because one of the things that I am most proud of is our community. And I really don't think that there's another community around that is as giving as ours. And continues to be year after year. And so what I would most like to say is thank you.